All right, guys, so this is basically how I roll into camp. Luckily, this is not a daily driver, so, I mean, this rig is always packed. I didn't really change anything. We just cleaned up and I repacked it and it's been sitting here waiting for the next trip. Um, but this is kind of how we always roll. So I'll just kind of go through the process and explain everything as I go, give you all the positives and negatives. And the whole point of this is for you guys to get ideas. This setup, it's fantastic for us, we love it. But it's not for everybody. Um, and the reason why it's not for everybody is because it is heavy. So those are things you really gotta consider. To be able to run this setup comfortably and do hard trails for me, I'm sitting on a Dana 60. But hopefully this will give you guys ideas. We camp, you know, anywhere from seven to you know, 25 plus days, day in and day out with two little kids. So that's why this setup works for us. If you're a weekend warrior, some of this stuff may be awesome. Some of this stuff may be a little bit overkill. But first thing I do when I get in is I set up my kitchen, which halfway set up right now. <sighs> Grab my sink, which is always on the side over there. Open it up. And I open this up. This is to prevent, I don't know, waterproof. So water doesn't get into my camp lock system. So the first thing I'll tell you is this is a hot water heater. It's always on, uh, made by Camp Lux. I've tried the Julka, it's a little bit thicker. I didn't like that because it was a little closer to my window. And the only difference I really saw was the digital thermostat versus the non-digital one here. And when I opened, I thought it'd be, inside I thought it'd be better, the Julka, like the internals may have been better or something, but it really wasn't. So I stuck with the Camp Lux. I'm really happy with the Camp Lux. <laughs> So I open this up as you saw, and that's it. Now I press a button and bam, I got instant hot water. No other setup time. So let me talk to you about the water system first really fast. I have a one pound propane tank that's always attached going from the camp lux into my trash bag, which we'll discuss later. And I'll show you guys. And I just have to open this up and I have instant hot water at all times. <clears throat> and that goes into my our sandy cat system that we sell over here and then i have a second sandy cats i don't know if you can see it on video but i have a second sandy cat system right here as well and it's always facing the other way so that's always on too if anybody wants to grab water whatever that's what we do <clears throat> water kind of is important for us at camp we go through a lot of it with the kids and cooking and everything so somewhere back here I carry this filter. Um, I get questions why I don't put filter inside my cans because I don't find it practical. 80% of the time, I just fill up clean water at like a Stater Brothers or any type of large supermarket for $1.20, you get five gallons. I just throw two of those or four of those in there. We get clean water, enough for five, six days. If we run out of clean water while we're out overlanding and we don't have access to you know, a supermarket for a couple of days, I will oftentimes use this platypus, which is, you know, something that I do. I'm a backpacker, so this is more than enough for me. I'm very comfortable with this. How comfortable using this for my kids. I will oftentimes use this platypus system and I will filter five gallons. And what we end up doing on the trip is in reality, I'm not filtering all the water because the water that we use to wash our hands, um, boil, I'm not really too concerned about most of the time, not all the time we're, when we're getting water from a stream. So I end up having this setup be our clean water, which is for drinking and I don't know, sometimes for cooking if we're not going to boil it. And then this setup is going to be our dirty water, which is for the hot water, washing dishes um, and so on. That's kind of a pretty simple water system. And then you know, it's, I'm plugging myself a little bit, but with Sandy Cats, we sell these attachments, uh, various attachments and shower attachments. For me personally, what I do is I have a Julka two purse, like two, two sweet tent. One we use for our bathroom, one we use for our showers. And I will literally just take another hose, plug it into here. Take my garden hose, plug it into here, recirculate hot water to put five gallons, to make this five gallons of hot water pull that out and that's what we shower with because we don't want to shower next to our car uh, for a lot of reasons you don't want to make a big mess of water next to your car but that's kind of how we roll 
I get a lot of questions, you know, what's the difference in our system and other systems. I'm not going to get into that in this video. I will tell you that our system I find is instant. So it actually works with a Julka really well. It works with a lot of things because a lot of other shower systems, you really got to spend a lot of time setting up. And if you build it out like this, I mean, it's instant. So my system works great for that. <clears throat> cool. So that's the water. Next thing I would do, I would open these guys up. This is a goose gear drawer system. I love goose gear more than anything else. I'll be honest with you. My wife's not running goose gear. Um, she's running another drawer system. I forgot what it's called, but it's one of my videos. And the reason why is because it's much lighter. I think my wife's whole drawer system is 60 pounds. I'm able to get away with this setup because I carry all the weight. And when my wife takes her car or my friends take their cars, they're completely unloaded basically they might have some bedding and stuff but nothing heavy goes in their trucks they don't have fridges therefore they can run on a stock axle comfortably on hard trails and not worry about damage so i carry all the weight here <clears throat> so the only thing my wife does have is a drawer system which we use as a pantry it's super light but goose gear is so much better it's so much it just works i've had it for three years it works i do have this little gap here and that's my fault. I wanted to switch the location of the drawers and I ended up having to cut them up a little bit, but you know, other than the cosmetics, this thing is awesome. I'll open this up. I'll take my jet boil. I'll throw it here. Attach a one pound per paint tank. We have all our cooking stuff here. I also have my electrical charging stations here um, for everything. And usually I'll pull out one or two of my DeVos lights <coughs> to set up later. We will open up our fridge. And that's pretty much it for cooking. So the way I built the system is I have access to this drawer all the time with, with the fridge here. And with my table here, I have access to this drawer. So this is where our salt and pepper goes, our cooking utensils go and so on things that we want to grab while we're cooking so we're not putting away the fridge to grab things pretty simple so far so that's basically covers all the cooking stuff um if we're traveling in one car we'll have another we'll have like a front runner box for our pantry sitting in the seat back seat if we're traveling in two cars my wife's drawer system is usually the pantry So then I will come up here and I'll grab one of my DeVos lights, usually both, but for the purpose of this video, I'll just grab one. I will open it up during daytime, set it up and have it ready for night. Um, we keep one next to the car and we keep one next to wherever we're eating the table. So these things are pretty bright, I'll be honest with you. Maybe that'll actually help with the lighting with the video, I don't know. We'll keep it on for now and see what happens. So that's kind of how we set it up. Am I, sorry, this thing started sliding on me. I am happy with the DeVos lights, I think they're a badass. I also have little caps to put red, amber uh, colors on the lighting. The only issue I really have once in a while is the stand. Um, I do tend to break a stand every, let's say, 30 days of use, and it's the base of the stand, and I have to buy another one for like 40 bucks or something, but that's the only, but I still love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything else because the batteries last forever. They're really, really functional. I know DeVos is now getting a lot of competitors out there um, that are, you know, crappier quality, honestly. So that's that setup. Uh, what else I have in my boxes up top, I'll tell you right now, on this side, is all my recovery gear and and I have all of this stuff up there so this is my favorite shovel ever um, it's made by Dominion off-road slash Jeep swag he doesn't make these anymore unfortunately I begged him to start making them again this is the most functional shovel I've ever used I mean you, you think this design is like kind of weird but it works I don't know why, but it's so functional. And this is basically the only shovel I carry now. It, you could dig fast, sand, dirt, whatever in it. 
I carry a little baby axe. We don't use this that much. Um, what I do tend to use a lot is this made by Gawa. So we do cut a lot of our own wood um, for various reasons. And I love this saw. It is awesome. It's amazing. I cut, I could cut like, I don't know, four hours of firewood in 20, 30 minutes using the saw with wood we find lying around. The only problem I've had is I've actually broken this blade or the attachment part of this blade before. So I carry a second attachment. <laughs> I, I have a lot of backups. And I carry this guy as a backup. I've never actually used this in the field yet, but I got this as a backup simply because wood for us is very, very important uh, for campfires and stuff, you know, because we do camp in cold a lot. But more importantly, it's even more important um, because there are times we're going through trails where, you know, we could run into dead wood on the trail and we got to cut through it. I don't carry a chainsaw, too much weight and space. So I need something that I know is going to be reliable. So I have a backup of my backup. That's what I carry on that side. On the other side, I carry my camping chairs. And I carry my table. So this is my favorite table. I don't even know who makes it. Um, you could buy them at REI usually. But they take up, they fold up really, really nicely. That's what it comes down to. And they're very reliable. I haven't broken one yet. Oh, there we go. Mountain Summit gear. I used the like extra large one, I think. The largest one they sell, basically. That's pretty much it. I don't bother clipping it in half the time. And this is kind of how we set up the kitchen. And the reason for that, the table usually is over here, is because when we're cooking, doing everything, and then we throw everything over here, um, all the plates, whatever. And this is a really fast setup for us, and it's a really a full-size kitchen at this point. With everything there, the cooking table here, and all the gear stuff, all the plates and stuff go on this table. And I don't know what, three, four minutes set up. I'm pretty happy with it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you the rest. So that's pretty much what goes up there. Um, everything is easily accessible. Then over here, I have my full electrical build out, which has a little light too. Full electrical build out here. And that's basically gives me on a battle born battery, I think a hundred amps. It's more than enough with a red arc to charge all my electrical stuff. So no complaints, always functions. I have a bunch of extra switches and outlets everywhere going from that system. Don't have solar because we drive a lot. So it is very rare that we're in the same campground for more than, I don't know, two nights at the most. And with two nights, like two and a half, three days, I have enough power to power everything without having to recharge. My Red Arc allows me to recharge from like zero to a hundred. Um, I'd say like in two to three hours of driving, maybe four, I'm not sure, I don't really calculate it. But the point is we're driving two to three, four hours almost every day. So I don't need solar because I prefer to park in the shade. So I prefer to be away from solar. I also have over here a C power plug. So when the thing is sitting in my garage, I can just plug it in and the battery's always topped off. Now I'm gonna go through these boxes really fast, some of them. <clears throat> By the way, straps, big fan of straps. Um, these are called Cam 6 straps and I love them. They are great. I mean, this, th these straps hold my propane tank here. That's pretty much all it holds. And my diesel, I'll show you in a second. But these straps, they never loosen up, which is awesome and that's pretty rare. And I found that if you use the Cam 6 tabs with like climbing webbing, then it becomes super tight. Like it actually grip the teeth in Cam 6 tabs, grip even better and stronger. So if you really want something super, super tight to be held on, I use the climbing webbing, but most of the time the Cam 6 uh, straps are good enough. Here I have front runner straps. I uh, didn't use them when I used ratchet straps for like, I don't know, three years. And I kept saying, I don't want to spend the money on front runner because it was so expensive. And then I decided to give in and I bought two and they work so well. I love them. 
Um, I take front runner straps over anything else for this, for, you know, for the little things in my setup. So, this is my box for my propane tanks. I just like, care, like to carry them like this so they don't rattle. And you're gonna ask me why do I use one pound propane tanks over like a five or 20 pound tank? I don't have space for a 20 pound tank, very simple. Um, a five pound tank is actually, you know, smarter to use and probably more conscientious to use, honestly. Uh, but A, I don't wanna deal with refilling it. B, I have a couple of things that work on propane. So I have my hot water heater that works on propane. I have the stove that works on propane. I don't know, there's something else that I forgot that works on propane here. Oh, my fire pit that works on propane. And the point is, I don't wanna have to keep plugging things back and forth. We don't use propane anymore for heat, we use diesel. So honestly, one pound here, you know, two pounds here, and maybe one pound for my fire pit, and I'll show you why I use so little in a second, is all I really need. So like five tanks would last us, you know, three weeks of overlanding. And it's just much more easy and convenient for us. So, sorry. <clears throat> okay, this is my diesel heater. This one's made by X Venture. I will show you how I plug that in in a second, or maybe I, I won't, I'll just show you the plug for it. But these are pretty easy to build yourself and modify. I didn't want to spend the time, so I got, I got it from X Venture. There's a couple of companies that all sell it for like the $500 price range. I did modify the attachment for the diesel. As you can see, they all come with like a, you know, two or three or five liter or whatever uh, diesel thing on it. I don't like to put the diesel inside the vehicle. I hate that. I want it on the outside of the vehicle. I'll show you how I solved that problem. And I used a little attachment um, that is for diesel and gas to connect everything when I'm ready. One thing I'll tell you about the diesel heaters is we went out in the first two, three days, it wasn't working on us and we couldn't figure it out. And then finally day three or four, I had service and I started researching it and I figured it out. There's an Alpine mode on these things. Make sure you just always, just turn on the Alpine mode once and leave it on all the time. Because if you're above three, 4,000 feet elevation, these things don't tend to not want to work that well unless you're on Alpine mode. On Alpine mode, I've had them work up to 10,000 feet so far, zero issues. Then I have this front runner box just heavy as hell and then I have two more front runner boxes here I'm not gonna open them up this is basically my tool kits and my spare part kits I would average about a hundred pounds total between these two boxes plus I have a CV axle behind the back seat sometimes two uh, one for me one for my wife because our CVs are causing me issues so I also carry a echo flow here and the reason why I carry the echo flow is two reasons as you can see, I'm all about backups. Um, we are, we go out on very long trips, not just a weekend trip. And on those long trips, if we have a failure somewhere, anywhere, like the fridge, and then we can't charge the fridge anymore, for example, we're screwed. And now we just possibly lost five, 10 days of a trip that we planned for six months. I don't know. Um, I'm just, I'm really obsessed with having the backup so we can always be comfortable at camp. Therefore, I have the Echo Flow for that reason as a backup to my Battleborn system, but I tend never, I've never used it in that perspective, but I have used it with Starlink. So Starlink does eat some juice. We do have Starlink on board too. Um, I usually keep the dish in my wife's rig though, unless she doesn't come, then it goes in the back seat. And Starlink is, you really need a lot of um, clear skies. So I tend to end up having to set up Starlink. The, the cord is like 50 feet, I think. I tend to end up having to set up Starlink maybe 100, 200, 300, 400 feet sometimes away from my rig where it's parked at the campground. Um, therefore, I'll just take this battery box, I'll move it 400 feet away, plug the Starlink in, use it for an hour or two, and then you know bring everything back in. Then I have these uh, fire pits. A couple of companies make these things. And they are Great. No, they're not great. Um, I've never actually, I'll be honest with you, I've never actually used these things for, uh, there we go, open. So everything goes inside here, which is nice and, and, uh, and this one has rocks too, by the way, uh, which is nice and clean. Luckily, we don't camp where there's fire bands that often, but I have had use for this because we have camped in places where 
we don't bring our own wood. I don't have the space for it, nor do I need to, because usually there's wood around. We camp really far in the back country. And we've been to places where we get there and everything is so moist and so wet and whatever. And it could take you an hour plus, if not longer, to start a fire. So I have been lazy and I've pulled this thing out. I threw a log on top or two, got it burning for 10, 15 minutes. And that's how I start my fire half the time. So this is just a great helper for fire starting where, where the wood's not dry. And I find it sometimes a necessity because we've been to places where you could spend three, four hours trying to start a fire with what you find on the ground and you're not starting the fire. I'm also going to talk about my diesel in a second. I'll show you that. Okay, so the other thing I have here, oh, I'll have to undo some stuff to show you guys because I usually don't. First, I have this trash roux bag. So, oh, not trash roux. This one is made by Overland and Gear Guy. Um, and inside we carry garbage bag with stuff and that's where the propane tank just goes in from the hot water heater. So it's always on. <clears throat> then behind it, so behind the bag, I have this uh, five gallon jug for a hot water heater. And the way I have it set up is I have this two pieces of Velcro here that I untie. And it gives me this feeder line that now I can connect into my diesel heater. So uh, that's all I have to do. I have to just grab this line. I usually don't have to undo the trash roll bag. I could reach behind it and grab it. I did it to show you guys. Um, but that's it. I take this, I, grab, I plug it into my diesel heater. And I could keep it a little bit further away from my car now. If I have a rooftop tent, which 90% of the time we don't, but when we do have a rooftop tent, I could just you know bring it closer up there or wherever my tent's set up, plug this into my diesel heater and I'm good to go. Um, I love this setup too. This is how I get the diesel outside of the vehicle at all times. Um, and it's just held up by my Cam 6 thingies and the diesel and the diesel actual box inside the vehicle so that's kind of the setup um this is by overlanding gear guy this bag i believe is like 200 bucks it's not worth it even close um i had trash bag and the trash bags suck because there's four thing only like two straps on them and they end up sliding a lot on the tire plus they get dirty and ugly really fast so i decided to go to this guy because these are like $200 bags and I figured they'd be perfect. They're not. It's a couple of things that are issues. I'm throwing this out there in, in hopes that somebody makes a better bag or recommends a better bag that actually solves my problems um, because this is a very thing that we use all the time, right? So the first thing is whatever these brackets are, they're made by Warrior, it says they suck because if they're not perfectly in and perfectly like aligned and you make a little pull sideways, they will come out. So the brackets suck. This doesn't hold that well. This loosens up. And once this loosens up, even though this has more straps, the bag will still tend to move around. I don't like that. The other thing I don't like is this strap is over here. It should really be over here so I can cinch everything down nice and tight instead of this flopping around while I drive um, if it's not fully loaded, right? Those are the things that I have complaints about. So I love a bag that's slightly bigger, to be honest with you, bigger, the, about the size of a trash roux, because those that size is perfect um, and has much better straps. Something, please tell me. Um, you know, the only other thing I wish I could have here in the, in a bag, which I don't think is possible, but you know, would be nice, is something that it, you know we could zip up completely, seal up completely, so it acts like a bear can. I don't know if that's possible. I'm just throwing ideas out there because. I still have to take my trash out a lot of times out of here every night and throw it inside my car um, and close everything up to, you know, keep the bears away. It would be nice if I could just, you know, leave everything here and zip everything up here. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm just throwing it out there. So these are my gull wings. I have them on both sides. On that side, I have a lot of uh, flashlights and headlamps for easy access at night. This side, if you open up, I keep my air and my medical kit this is but made by um i don't know medic something and it's a really good kit something that you could probably build yourself but this just simplifies everything and i have my drones here so i do get a lot of questions about my roam cases um 
they work so that's that um i what i don't like about them is this lip is way too big and it eats up a lot of space so you actually do lose a lot of space in here so it's smaller than it looks from the outside i get it because plastic so this gives it rigidity it's just you know i don't know the second issue i really have with them the only real issue i actually have with them other than the space lost is the fact that when i close it up on this side specifically the top warped after about three years of use so they are a little crooked not a big deal everything kind of closes but i noticed for me to make this hinge not pop open when i'm on trail every time i close it i give a give it like a love tap and then it works so supposedly they have new hinges now that prevent that um i don't know if that's true or not because i've asked them for those hinges uh, almost a year ago have not received them yet um but yeah that's the wrong case the other thing i'm not opening up here is my awning which i have an arb awning and I, everybody's like why don't you get a 270 or whatever 360 degree i don't know how many degrees you have in awnings the arb awning is i like the, the fact that it's all aluminum so that's nice for a little bit more protection it's not the easiest setup you do have to kind of spend two minutes setting it up instead of 10 seconds pulling it out but the reason why i loved arb awning over any other awning and i'll never trade it out is because the arb awning has a full enclosure tent basically so if you have the awning out and you're in the mood you could attach a, t a tent that fully encloses that could have all the walls be just netting or you could close all the walls up and it's not like most other awnings where you just kind of have to piece everything together it's an actual tent that attaches to it and I think it's genius because the way it kind of functions, um, it's better and it's faster than like deploying a regular tent. And it really feels like kind of like, uh, I don't know, a sunroom or whatever you want to call it because of all the netting. So A, if we are at camp and I just need a room to work in on my computer with Starlink or whatever, and I, it's a really good room for that. B, if there's a bunch of mosquitoes around we could set up our kitchen inside there and we're chilling in there without any mosquito issues see with my little kids they don't like to sleep outside and sleeping in the tent or in a rooftop tent you still feel that you're enclosed and you're sleeping inside with the air be awning and all the windows kind of open just the netting you really have that feeling that you're still sleeping outside and you're still enclosed, kind of, you're safe. Well, with the kids at least, you know? So it's, it's a really good option to have. And because of that enclosure room, I'll never go to another awning system. So that's pretty much it. Um, not overly complicated, but honestly, it's a lot of thought. To get all this done in a mid-size SUV, to get everything to work so smoothly together, um, and to get everything to you know, be fast, it took a long, long time to figure it all out. And I really have all the amenities that we need as a family for you know long trips if you're going to do this in a, you know if i had a tundra this would be so much easier i can handle the payload and i have more space to work with if i have a tacoma i have more way more space to work with right um payload i don't know but at least i have more space to work with in a mid-size suv and utilize still keeping the back seats i think this is this is bomber for me um with a family of you know four <sighs> really trying to tell you guys if you're going to go this route and go this crazy, which people do when I see it all the time on stock axles, you're probably going to stick on their roads and pavement because the second you start wheeling, you're going to start getting problems unless you upgrade your axles and upgrade a lot of other components to handle this weight. Things to consider. Um, hopefully this gave ideas to everybody. And if, even if you're just a weekend warrior, you probably don't need this overbuilt setup this can still give you ideas instant hot water is awesome at all times and if you don't appreciate it i promise you your wife and kids will appreciate it <laughs> thank you